Well, well, well. It's been a while since I've been in this area. I picked up a friend named Evan. We were on our way to Mossoya. Now we're here while getting the mid DPU. 892 is the mid DPU on I 150. I don't see him yet. He's taking their sweet time going Double up from the Garrett to to Pemberville while we were being blocked IO-10 is blowing crossings after crossings and now he's by Poplar Street blowing Poplar Street actually with a Y2 duo 143 I actually have seen before and sad to say that we were blocked for I would 50 for quite a while and now we're we're at Poplar for for quite a while took us took my scooter went back to the park and then saw I would 51 with a Devo of front leading and a dash 8 Y and 2 7868 will be trailing second on I 151 he will be taking the Y to go west towards No Baltimore today. Luckily, I was able to pace him down towards Poplar. This ch this chase was not easy from the park to Poplar, even though I was cruising a little bit speed, but I wasn't able to go to the other side, and so I was beat backwards. So. What do we got? Well, this has to be the end of chase at 5151. It was quite a chase, but now I'm just sitting here at the crossing, me holding my phone while recording this I-151. My friend saw me pacing this I-151 from the park to here at Poplar Street Crossing. And... I don't do this every day, but I would do this sometime a lot today. I would tell you that for sure. This is the first time I would do this. However, the GEY Cab Dash 8 would still support as YN2 paint oh, yeah. scheme, which is very, very cool these days because a lot of our GEY Cab Dash 8 or Dash 9s would be in Y2C. So, at least it's still supporting that Y2.
Alright, now we're shooting with the camcorder. Finally, after shooting with the phone. After all, it doesn't give it does give pretty good footage and quality on the phone, but I would say the camcorder is way better. Now, we're shooting an ethanol that will go to North Carolina in that significant state. I don't know where, but this is 261, taking a while to go south. Now, we're getting a meat on the wheeler. This time, it's an animal going west. This is our first westbound of the day on the, on the wheeler. We would see the one westbound, but he would be take, would have been taken away towards no Baltimore, but that would have been I-151. Now this is I-135 going towards Bedford Park, Illinois with a solo g row out front. There's a surprise in the middle that I'm not keeping it as a secret, but I will keep it as a secret. Let's get this I-135. That is our surprise right there. Two mid DPUs with one engine of one.
that's really cool to see. Because I don't see too many TPUs often. And the only time I did, what I think I did, was an H1 in the Eerie. But that was on 14 and in 2021. So it's been a while. But I-135 must be very, very, and I mean very long. So that's probably the reason why he had two in the middle. Train. This one is on the Fast Royal District. Our first NS train of the day here at Fast Royal. This one is 277, which is kind of late, but it just has just three normal NSs. Don't care anyway. Just two, three GEs. Two are Jeevos. One is a C6M. That is the mid middle engine is the C6M. The West two are Jeevos. And you see this guy that's walking. Why did he have to be in our shots? Gosh. Some people has to be in our shots sometimes. Luckily, if this wasn't anything special.
We got another westbound. Finally, another one on the Garrett. That will be the last NS train for quite a while. Until L70 could be returning later. Don't know when. However, we got a westbound intermodal I-161. He will be t heading toward North Baltimore Yard in North Baltimore, Ohio. The trailing unit on this train has one of the GE YCAB-8. It's 7792. There goes a former named Sebastian wanting back to get his phone to take pictures of this train. It's one of the older Dash 8s. 7792, I always said that. Luckily, it's still wearing the white and blue paint. Okay, I thought the CN would be leading. I guess not. <sighs> I don't know. They had two other CSX units that are leading this N560, which is from Cincinnati, Ohio, Queenskate Yard, to Selkirk Yard, to Selkirk, New York. The CN SD70M will be trailing third out of three. It's still cool to see on the CSX Willard, even though it's a foreign power and around the Toledo area, we would see that the Canadian National a lot because I live near them and yeah, it's like cool still. I don't care if it's foreign power that I see them all the time. I don't you really get to see much on the CN by me, but it's still cool to see. Let's get the west of this M560.
Alrighty. Now, we got an eastbound. An eastbound would be a ballast train heading yep. east towards yep, Bellevue, Ohio. We were even lucky that we got back to the park on time before this one came by. I would thought something would be coming up from the Columbus subdivision of the CSX, which is the CNO, but here comes this ballast train, which will be heading towards Bellevue, Ohio, on the old Fostoria district, with two GEs in the lead with this ballast train. It would be really cool to see. I don't really see Hardog trains, which is ballast trains. It's kind of rare to see around my area, because either you either see them on a Fostoria district or Chicago line, but still, it's been ages since I last saw one, like, since July 2nd of 2023, that was like a month ago, so, that was kind of cool, seeing this one again, or another Herzog. Down there. Man, I really thought I would get them from Poplar, but the chase from the scooter absolutely failed. But still, at least I got a little bit video of the power, even though it's just normal power, one GE leading and AC44, which is both in line 3 but now that was from the phone now we're shooting back onto the camcorder after carrying that from the park to the Poplar Street where we were all well fanning from yeah I guess the chase did not go as planned but still at least it wasn't anything special whatever
now we are kind of looking at a train that would be taking his sweet time to go south because, however, he will be taking the connection to go east on from the Pemberville CNO to the BNO, which is Wheeler Sub. And yeah, I didn't record the whole train of this one. We would have another train taking the connection, but that would be 567 that did not record it on that one. But here comes CSXT M215, which has 7260, which was a recent rebuild back in 2022. And he came from Cumberland, Maryland, taking the connection to go north. To Walwich and then Wayne Michie. He's gonna drop all the manifest cars, which that could take forever. If you could see that NS train on the Fostroyer district, well, if you could see or you could zoom in when I when you guys watch this video, this is the Lehigh Valley Heritage locomotive that is leading this coal train. Taking his sweet time again, but this time he's gonna have to stop for like at least five minutes because we would have a CSX westbound on the Garrett and Willard. He is alone, he's straight down the tracks, so he's far still. We didn't actually see anything when we were getting ready to shoot the Lehigh Valley. After we were shooting this one for now, before he was getting back on a move after the CSX I-137 cleared, this Lehigh Valley was clear to go, but I'll save that one another time. But let's just get the Lehigh Valley as of right now. Here comes I-137, or it could be I-135. He is going through Falls Joya after like one minute later. He will be flying west and then pounding the diamond by the B&O and the Falls Joya District Diamond. So he will be quite long. And then after that train cleared, we got quickly set up to our spot by the diamond. This is my shot. And um, now he's finally departing, bound for Barnes Harbor, Indiana. Which I, myself, I would thought he would be taking the Chicago line since the Chicago line goes by Burns Harbor, Indiana. Oh well, at least we're getting it here on the Fostoria district.
well. Here comes M506. M506. Which I would get a short recording on this train because why did I keep doing this all day long? I would be chasing this train to the park once again. He, uh, he would actually beat me this time. I did not beat him. I was going quick as I can, but it was kind of dying on me, so I didn't really like go as fast as I wanted to. Yeah, this chase did not go well. I can just tell you that right now. I was shooting with the phone, that's why the crawly looks better than the camcorder, but I think the camcorder is better than the phone sometimes. Some phones are bad quality. Oh. Before I had this phone, it was like, the old phone was like, ugh. I don't know. Now, we're just getting this 506, the west of the train here, and then, I don't know what we would have next, but my guess is L70. Let's just get the west of this 506. He is going towards Walbridge, Ohio, from Creedsgate Yard in Cincinnati, Ohio. There's the end of 506. Now we're sitting here on the Falls Joya District once again. And this one is L70. Coming from the west, going east towards Falls Joya Yard, which is Brian Yard. So now he's going to be crawling. I would thought he would be going faster. Like the last time I saw L70, it was like a big, big meetup on July 2nd. Well, July 18th was a good meetup too, but he wasn't going east. He was going west out of Falls Joya. This time he wasn't actually going quite fast than I thought he would. So, I don't know if there's speed restrictions for going. Exactly, but I thought he, he would go, but whatever. He's probably going into the yard from July 2nd. He wasn't going into the yard. He probably was going into the yard, like the east end of the yard. However, this one's not. He's going into the yard. The west side of the yard, so he's going quite slow. That's the reason why.
Here comes a NS Westbound, which would be the NS Bostoya District once again. This one's another NS. This one is a freight heading west. This one's probably going towards Elkhart, Indiana. There's my friend Sam right there, the Toledo Wellfanner. I'll link his district link in the description later or the link above or whatever I decided to do but now getting this westbound wasn't wasn't too bad to get my Sam and Evan those are two of my friends that I know of I don't know what he was doing I don't know if he was trying to blow a rock or what I don't know right now I'm just trying to focus getting this westbound which is flying Here comes another eastbound on the Garrett Railroad. So this one is like a, a little sand train. Probably B454. That's probably my guess. I don't know what the symbol what this one will be. But it's a sand train heading to Newcastle. Probably in Newcastle, Pennsylvania area. Or Pittsburgh area. Wherever he decided he's going. It's a lot of sand cars, that's for sure. But there would be an opportunity. A UP Jeebo as a mid deep rear DPU. Eastbound coming this way with a normal ace. I lied to my, to my friends. I yeah. thought it was an M-2 with a plank. But it's a normal ace that is leading this 12 Q. Heading for Bellevue, Ohio. For Mormon Yard. So it would have two engines up front. And then a surprise would be 
kind of weird. It's not really a surprise, actually. It's a normal ace as a weird DPU. So now we're just gonna get this 12Q going east. That's a flare back. So, this is IO 17 from Worcester, Massachusetts to Bedford Park, Illinois. He would have a flare back 12 in second. Due to PTC, 4810 would not be able to leave, but it's still cool anyway. At least I got to see my last flare back till they're all getting rebuilded. But, they are actually getting into Flare Max, like 4810, but with Y3C. Why is my friend in the background of this video? I don't know, it's weird. However, we would have another westbound after this one goes by. I don't know why I'm standing too close. That is too close. Alrighty, here comes another westbound. This one that we didn't think about, I would thought it's the new Conwell, but it's not. It's this one's an immortal. And it would end up being a mixed freight for the Conwell. Here comes an eastbound with an NS Gevo and a BNSF with the Troy second facing east. This one might be 12Q, but this one might be 148. That one also goes to Conway. And here comes a westbound with an NS-9 and 2758. The M-2 will be trailing second on this manifest going westbound towards either Elkhart would be 303 or Decatur and the noise on 35N, but 35N does not come through here for Fostoria, so this one could be 303, an afternoon morning manifest. Well, he would actually stay here for quite a while till dark because in my information we would actually be having the new Conwell 1976 
would be leading on X567, but me and the crew would not have a single clue where he was at. He kept stopping while Willard, and now he was on a back of the move until we was stopped by Attica Junction. But, oh well, this might be the last train until I got to record. But we would see more trains, but I did not record them. But my phone was about to die, so this was probably the last train I was able to record. Thank you for watching, and I'll either see you in the Michigan State or the Buckeye State Wells.